Greetings, ladies and my gents, and welcome to this narration of the web series, The Nature Predators. If you're new to the series, there is a playlist listed down below in the description. And as always, I hope that you enjoy. Chapter 108 Memory Transcription Subject Chief Hunter Isiv, Oxford Dominion Sector Fleet. Date Standardized Human Time, December 13th, 2136. My shuttle traversed the space that separated me from my alien pen pal. The 8,000 Dominion ships I'd summoned had arrived as well. Those were the assets I had within my immediate range of the Dosa homeworld. The Oxal fleet awaited my command, requiring further instructions as to our goal. The reason why they hesitated was simple. The Federation had numerical strength and seemed fantastical. The Hakolshians had sent 40,000 ships barreling into the system, or possibly more. It was greater than the initial size of Kalsum's extermination fleet. I understood what Prophet Descendant Gisnel had implied about the prey powers being able to muster up numbers if they wanted to. The invasion of Malou's system involved an overwhelming show of force, per my initial readings. The more I performed the mental math, it was striking how easy these numbers would be there for assembly. With a mere 30 species having flipped to humanity's side, that left 270 races to pull resources and ships from. If all of those races contributed 140 ships, that gave the number we saw today. It's a mere fraction of their available resources to pull from. This is the tip of the iceberg for the Kulshian's might. The Dosa's defenses were steamrolled by Juggernaut Armada, and the human ships seeking repairs didn't hold a candle to this astronomical force. General Jones was off her hunting pedestal if she thought that I could stop their assault. Even our numbers were unlikely to achieve more beyond delaying the Federation's end goals. But since I was already here, risking my cover, there had to be an attempt to rescue Valra. Valra has a old Federation spot, a space station which has a separate area for humans awaiting repairs, I muttered to myself. I was grateful that my shuttle had no company, so I could muse over how to locate her aloud. The Oxal ships around me grew restless, now that I was in the system. They expected orders from the Chief Hunter soon, and it was a matter of time before the UN and Federation noticed our arrival, too. It was in my sentimentality that was turning me to interfere. My viewport zoomed in on Malou. The Doso homeworld wasn't reflecting any antimatter damage. The Gaultians had the planet comfortably under control. After Federation failed to subdue the Mazix, they'd ramped up their efforts. I could see the enemy sending shuttles down to Malou's surface and realized that the goals were likely re-education. All Oxlaw ships, listen up. We are here at the request of the United Nations, who have the means to feed all of us forever. I barked into the Dominion's encrypted feed. Some of you were there on Earth, and you remember how well you were fed. For that reason, I expect your hunting efforts to avoid Terran affiliated races. We know it'll be worth the pittance of restraint. Now, engage with the Federation attackers at once! Our ships surged forth out of the various gravity wells, swarming the handful of attackers allocated to outer stations. I was bent over my holopad and scrolling through a poorly secured military personnel database. Inspectors were considered part of the Space Force and Mulanu, as far as I remembered. That meant that I could figure out which outpost Fara was assigned to. Plasma munitions flashed across the void, and the element of surprise allowed us to pick off any stragglers. Dosa defenders, complemented by an array of UN ships, seemed to pause their desperate efforts. There weren't many friendlies left within the system, but the survivors seemed baffled by the Oxal's arrival. Perhaps they thought our onslaught was an inopportune coincidence. Attention, military personnel of Dosa home system, I broadcasted my text message onto the open channel, and tried to eliminate any hostile words. The Oxal are here at the behest of the United Nations, to aid in defending your claim against the Federation. I'll only warn you once, do not fire upon us. My pupils darted back to the screen, where I'd searched up Valra's file. The rodent's likeness was unmistakable in her documentation, and her present assignment was listed near the top. I searched up the space station number, turning it down on a star chart. The rest of the battle faded away as I raced to pull up the location on that viewpoint. The complex was nestled within an asteroid belt, which separated the inner and outer planets. A few dozen Federation attackers had tamed its meek defenses and docked with the station to capture their inhabitants. The energy readings in the vicinity were fresh. 
suggesting that the Colchians only put down spiteful human resistance in the past hour. There might still be time to save the doser, if you hurry. I hurled the maximum output into my thrusters, and my shuttle blazed a path for Faro Station. A few arcs or vessels tailed after their commander, though I figured they were baffled by the chief hunters leading the charge. This entire mission was going to raise questions that I couldn't answer. Right now, I didn't have time to waste on tact. The Federation vessel pulled away from the station and met us for a head-on confrontation. I shirked the engagement altogether, leaving my underlings to duke it out with the prey. The sudden courage from the Colchian surprised me. It was clear that they were more competent than they let on. My eyes swelled with franticness, searching for an open docking port. There are none, I hissed to myself. None! I don't have time for a proper breaching action. I have to get down there for fuck's sakes. I'll make an opening. Scanning the station's blueprints, I identified a maintenance tunnel, which should be well clear of any living quarters. The shuttle carried two missiles, and I hoped the use of one would only demolish a wall. While the station operators could seal off individual compartments, that also meant that I'd need a pressurized suit for oxygen. I dug the emergency fabric on with haste before donning a safety harness. With my biological requirements taken care of, I fired a missile into the station's exterior wall. The tunnel was exposed to the vacuum of space, its structure blasted wide open. Bullets clipped my rear flank as Federation hostiles noticed my approach. Curses spewed from my maw, and I wrenched the steering column towards the new gap. The shuttle closed in on the Dosa space station, dodging enemy munitions. I held no interest in returning fire. That would increase the amount of time it took to reach Valra. My ship's nose dove through the opening, and I twisted the vessel's body to skid along the floor. Friction resulted in both an awful screech and a shuddering sensation, before their tails slammed against the half-intact wall. My shoulder ached from the harness's restraint, but I unclipped it without waiting. My suited claws tucked the firearm into a holster, and I slunk out into the station. The night backdrop of the space was visible through the gap, as well as the distant exchanges of munitions. Suffocating Colchians and other Federation allies lay gasping for air alongside two Terran soldiers. I grabbed one human in each paw and dragged them towards the section divider. The primates were lethargic, and their expressions were locked in an empty display. There was nothing behind their eyes, with no oxygen coming to the brain. I opened the emergency compartment, throwing the weaker predators inside, seeding the hatch behind me. I removed my oxygen helmet, and the Terran skin had been turned blue, though they were rapidly regaining normal coloration now. Hi! I swished my tail as politely as I could, and allowed the humans a moment to breathe. Chief Hunter is a virtue server. Sorry about the, uh, unforeseeable depressurization. What are your names? One primate began reaching for her service weapon, and I hissed in irritation. My gun was out of its holster in a second, pointed at her in warning, and her hand remained frozen in place for a long second, before she submitted to my threat. I bared my teeth, a formidable warning rather than amusement. My tongue flitted between my teeth. Ah! You guys look like fresh reinforcements. Let me guess, the United Nations sent you from Fell, right across this border. You never saw direct action since Cesar's plan, for a swift taker of Vasilis was a failure. Go to hell, the female coughed. So I was right, I take it. I'm here as an ally. Where are the dose of civilians? I promise, I'm here to get them out, not harm them. Everybody knows your idea of getting them out is a cattle farm. The other human sat up, pulling a broken glass instrument off his eyes. What are you really up to? Claiming this system for yourself. Oh, making steward? I'm a spy for the United Nations, a piss poor one. That is what I'm up to. You and your government's stupid ideas. I've been, uh, personally motivated into offering assistance. A spy, huh? Of course, you're the one from Earth. They had every opportunity to take you to Area 51 or some clandestine facility. The female cursed in exasperation. Are you kidding me, Oleg? You just instantly believe the UN has arcs or spies with zero proof. Do you think that I would honestly cross such a story of my own? Saying such a thing aloud is going to get me killed. I have no time to persuade you. Humans, so tell me where the Dossa are now, I roared. Oleg tilted his head. Good argument. Props to you, man. They've been ordered to lock themselves in their quarters. Big sign says personal quarters. Just keep going straight, can't miss it. Thank you. Was that so hard? Grumbling to myself, I stomped off past the corridor's hatch, the Terran soldiers struggling to their feet, and I resigned myself to them following me like a headless venal. Arrogance aside, I could use backup if I encountered Federation resistance. The herbivores might lack skill in combat, 
but they could team up on me alone. Humans are competent fighters, so it's not like they're dead weight. That said, this Oleg guy seemed a little too willing to believe that I'm a spy. Oleg squinted, without the glass adornment by his eyes. I hoped the human hadn't lost his vision altogether. Even if he could only see shapes, I was certain that he was more competent than the Caucians. The female human, who I believe Oleg had called Lisa in whispers, was staring at me with disturbing, bloodshot eyes. Perhaps the duo were following me to ensure that I wasn't rounding up any doser. I scanned the perimeter for hostiles. How has your military experience been going? Uh, this was supposed to be a relaxing assignment. After watching the Herkin for weeks, Lisa complained. We were shipped here just in case, and the second we kick our boots off, then they come. Now the Arcs are here, telling fantastical stories that sound like Oleg crafted them. Oleg cleared his throat. Uh, they hit all of our allies with this test invasion. I hope that it's not like this everywhere. I've grown attached to some friends on Vendel Prime. My source says that this is the primary target. Vendel Prime is safe, I replied. That's a relief. Say, is if the alleged secret agent, what convinced you to come here? You should tell us, since we're a team. We're not a team. Come on, you totally want to tell me. I've already told these two humans everything. Just get to Fowler's location. They might as well be known the truth. If they're stalking me, they're going to notice that I know her. An internet chatting service, a, uh, a dosser is my best friend, I growled. Lisa's eyebrows furrowed. What? I'd hardly believe that you dared to make a story like that up. I would not, because it is insane. I scanned my visual translators over the text markings overhead, and it deciphered the Dosa language as directions with arrows. Just as Oleg had promised, the crew quarters were located down the main corridor. The passage had been devoid of confrontation, but gunfire echoed from up ahead. That meant Federation soldiers had already reached the living areas. The Colchians must have sent forces down from two angles. One boarding party had been held in the maintenance tunnel that I detonated. The other likely attacked from the other side, charging straight from the hangar bay to the quarters. Splitting up human defenders was rather tactical for a species that didn't know the meaning of the offense, allegedly. Which one is your supposed pal? Lisa pointed to a piece of paper, which I assumed contained room assignments. Also, I see a few dozen Colchians and count three of us. Maybe we should rethink our strategy. The prototype visual translator had no trouble with the roll call, which listed Farah as room 219. I committed the doser symbol for the number to memory, knowing her life depended on it. My firearm wavered in my paws, and I dropped into a hunting crouch. The humans crept along as well, lining up enemies in their scopes. My pupils scanned each door for the number, while I ensured that my steps were silent. I could see Cerulean and Violet Colchians moving between rooms and exiting with sedated Dosa. All I could hope was that Farah wasn't among those already captured. It would be next to impossible to spring her from the Federation re-education party. My gaze drifted several doors down the hall. One room passed where the Colchians were now. I pointed with a claw. That one! My whisper was almost inaudible, but the humans understood the message. These Terrans were rather cooperative. I wondered if it was since they could gang up on me the second I made a move or was found to be deceitful. The primates often had a strange way of showing gratitude for saving their lives. I'd hauled their oxygen-deprived bodies from the tunnel, yet they were likely calculating ways to kill me. I can respect it at least, unless I try to backstab them. I doubt they'll try anything stupid. Fighting the Federation is enough for now. Right now, the three of us needed to get past the Colchian posse. The enemy's soldiers stood between us and Farah's door. The thought crossed my mind to use the Terrans as a distraction, but I knew that they'd see right through such suggestions. How were we going to reach the dose of friend without alerting the invaders? A firefight seemed like the only solution, so I gestured for us to charge. My claw depressed a trigger and I nailed two cautions in the back before they could react. Oleg and Lisa joined in on my fire, peppering any soldiers that couldn't find cover. The Federation got their bearings in a second and hurled bullets back in our direction. We dropped down closer to the floor, crawling closer to Farah's door. Most hostiles had ducked inside a room where they were currently raiding, but a few had moved on to the next quarters. Room 219. I scurried past the first door, feeling static electricity as a bullet whizzed over my spine. Lisa's offered its suppressed fire as visually impaired Oleg scrambled after me. The Federation had gotten to target ahead of us, but I couldn't stop. 
I fired desperate shots at the advancing soldiers. No, no, you are too close to let anything happen. Panic clamped in my heart, seeing four cautions kicking down Thara's door. I could hear a shrill scream, which lacked in power or grit. Adrenaline flowed through my veins alongside a deeper emotion of concern. I rounded the doorway in a fluid motion and used my nostrils to pounce at the Federation lackey. My body was acting on pure autopilot as I tore one soldier's throat on instinct. Vaura's screams intensified, which encouraged my frenzy. If I was lucid, I wouldn't have realized she was shrieking because of my presence. However, in my haze, all I could see was two cautions cornering her. Another was tracking the rodent's movements from further back. My tail swept across the floor, earning a sickening crack as it broke two cautions' ankles in one swoop. The enemy tracker turned his gun muzzle towards me, and I punched out a fist on instinct. My appendage connected with bones while the scent of blood hit my nostrils. Vision sharpened as the scent made my eyes dilate. I just shattered a caution's windpipe and spine with a single punch. The duo with broken legs started to move, but Oleg rushed in to stop them from engaging. It was tempting to finish the helpless caution's off. However, enough of my awareness returned to realize I'd sickened Fara. I strained to bottle the adrenaline, drawing ragged gasps. Human, help me! The dozer managed to cry. Uh, I, uh, Oxor. Olo's eyes narrowed with suspicion. I thought you said she was a friend. Uh, I grunted, struggling to formulate coherent words. The blood was still rushing in my ears, causing my claws to twitch. It's complicated, is it not, Farah? Uh, uh, how does it do you know? Additional horror lit up in Dosa's case. Her terrified brain arrived at the truth. Something told me that she'd placed a name to the Oxel, who was towering over her with a maniacal snow. I possessed a keen awareness of the blood slathered across my claws and every scar and tooth fracture I had. The human watched from the sidelines, discerning enough of the subtext. Faura swayed on her feet. Uh, Sifi? Yeah. The dose's eyes widened further than should be possible and passed out onto the floor. End of chapter. I would quickly like to thank our tier 5 patrons. Drag Zoon, WRE, Quantum Wednesday, Ambrose Catal, Lord Ashrakal, Bushmaster 177, Casper Arnholtz, Cam Maxwell, and Arcadian. Thank you very much.